everyone, it's Gordon Einstein. Uh, very happy to have you join us now for Future Talk, the most exciting show in crypto and blockchain. Of course, we are sponsored and supported by the AIBC Summit. Uh, that's Artificial Intelligence and Blockchain. We're going to be having the conference here in, in Dubai in late May. Uh, very excited for that. Even in these COVID times, we need to get together. We need to keep our community running and happening. So I'm, I'm honored to have as my guest, Peter Gear. Uh, from the Wise Token. Peter is uh, just, I've had the opportunity to talk to him a few times. Very intelligent, very perceptive, very thoughtful and ethical approach to decentralized finance and blockchain and crypto. Just a very deep thinker. So I was trying to get him on the show and he was kind enough and to honor us with his presence. So Peter, how are you? Hey, thank you so much. That's very kind. And it was, uh, it was a great conversation we had. I love talking about you know, tokenomics and everything crypto related. Yes. And, you know, and, and you, you are very thoughtful about it. And if I, well, look, I always start these shows the same and I always use the same analogy. You know, there's these Marvel comics or Marvel movies. There's always an origin story. So Wolverine has an origin story. So I want, I want to know the Peter origin story. Oh, right? yeah. yeah. So, so you, 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 you know the drill. <laughs> yeah, 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 absolutely. So I, uh, I discovered cryptocurrency in 2016. And um, I, I, I actually discovered blockchain technology first. And then I was like, wow, this is the most amazing thing. I jumped headfirst into the first cryptocurrency I saw and it turned out to be a massive scam. So I was so I figured out really quickly that if it's not my keys, not my crypto, never give your money to any uh, platform that says that they're going to give you a return. Um, so that, that that was a huge uh, wake and, up. And I'm sorry, there's already stuff to dissect just on what you said. How do you get involved with blockchain before getting involved in crypto? That's unusual. Well, there was TED Talks about blockchain technology. And so I was very interested about a technology where you can trust the system and not have to rely on third parties. So that seemed pretty revolutionary to me. And the most obvious use case is, is, is money because mm -hmm. you, know, we, uh, you, you gotta trust somebody for your money. You can't just be giving it out to, to anybody. So the idea of having a $0 overhead cost system that you could trust to keep your money secure, that seemed pretty revolutionary to me. Um, so interesting. And then can yeah. you can you name the platform that was a little bit disappointing to you or yeah, we gonna... yeah. BitConnect. BitConnect. And you know what? As as a new as user, in BitConnect. <laughs> exactly. That BitConnect. But the thing yeah. is, you know, as a new user who's just discovering it, do, do you know like BCC was like number three on coin market cap. They had right. ads everywhere. They had reputable people talking about them. So like as a new person, I was like, I did my research. Like it's on freaking coin market cap. Um, like how, how could this, like, like you, you can't tell me this thing is a, is a big scam when, when you got all this other stuff. So now, right. now that it X is scammed, um, it, it's very easy to see, oh, that was a scam. But during the time, there was actually a lot of controversy. And as somebody new, it was actually a pretty plausible idea to me that, oh, they, you know, somebody set up a trading bot that could like scalp uh, trades or whatever and deliver a massive return. Like it, you, you could get just about the same return just holding Bitcoin. So it didn't seem like uh, uh, an, an out there idea. Um, so there's me, new, new guy, first crypto I learned about, jumped head first, mm -hmm. even got some friends and family members into it. And then, uh, and then like Oof. a couple months later, boom. Uh, what, so, were the, what were those conversations like? <laughs> oh man. So, um, so those conversations were, were, uh, were pretty brutal. Like obviously lost a lot of credibility Mm -hmm. And, and, and that was, uh, you know, a difficult thing to go through. And I think that's the reason why I am now, uh, so like, I, I, I know so much more about cryptocurrency now. It was like that event that kind of drove me to, okay, I'm going to figure out everything there is to know about this technology, figure mm -hmm. out how it works. Cause I still have, I, I knew, I knew that it was my fault that, that, uh, that I didn't, uh, you know, do the proper analysis and that it wasn't the technology's fault. And so I, uh, you know, kept uh, seeking to learn more about the technology. I mm -hmm. became an investor. 
Um, and then I, I ended up creating my own token because what, what I was really looking for, like the first thing that kind of clicked in my head when I learned about blockchain technology was, okay, we can make an asset backed money. Mm-hmm. And, and you don't see a lot of asset backed cryptos in, in, the, in, uh, in the space. There aren't that many. And most of them are stable coins, which aren't that interesting to me because they're pegged to the US dollar. I wanted to make an asset backed crypto that's not pegged to the US dollar right. uh, and, that, and that can appreciate in price. But since uh, it has a pool of assets backing it, it only has a limited downside. So that's that's the that's like in a nutshell what wise token is well, i'm gonna pause you for a second because we're gonna be spending basically the whole show on wise but i okay, I'm still, sure. i i still want to get the backstory a little bit so you're I, I kind of am gonna embarrass myself by saying this because given what you've accomplished but you come in, you came into crypto and blockchain after i did so what the hell have i done with my life no but you, <laughs> you know you, you came in in 2016 and which is you know, it's not you're not late, late, but you're not one of the first movers to, to oh, yeah, accomplish what you've accomplished and done what you've done is pretty fast and pretty impressive. What what were you what were you doing with your life before 2016? Well, I I am a, an intelligence officer in the U.S. Army, so I joined the Army in 2007, uh, right after college, and uh, got deployed to Afghanistan. I was actually a combat medic when I was in Afghanistan. Oh, wow. Uh, when I came back, I, I went to officer Canada school, commissioned as an officer, branched intelligence. And, uh, but, but I was in the Army National Guard after I came back from Afghanistan. So it's just part time. And so uh, to put food on the table, I, I, became, a, I became a real estate investor. So I, I used a, my uh, kind of springboard was using a VA loan to purchase a property and mm-hmm. it had like multiple units. And so I'd like live in one and then rent out the others which kind of evolved into an Airbnb business, uh, which later involved, uh, uh, evolved to uh, different investments. And uh, now I have properties uh, in the US and in Colombia too. The country um, so Colombia. I mean, yeah, obviously. the country Colombia. Wow. Yeah. Do you speak um, Spanish? I mean, how did, I, sorry, this has nothing to do with crypto. I'm just curious, how did that happen? Well, it, it was, uh, so, so I was expanding uh, my DMB business. And one of the things in the US is that a lot of regulations came down and it became harder to grow an Airbnb business exponentially. Um, and b- b- because the best way to grow that is actually not buying the properties, but leasing the properties from, uh, uh, from landlords mm-hmm. and then, uh, and then uh, using those for Airbnb. And so there's a lot of regulations. It makes it very hard to do that. So I was searching for other countries that, um, that would be a good business model. Colombia is one of those that doesn't have the regulations. It's a relatively safe country. And there's a lot of uh, Europeans, Americans that, that, that travel there um, for, for the experience and, you know, beautiful country. Uh, it's a, it's a destination resorts. And ever since, you know, Pablo Escobar, uh, is removed from the picture. It's been 25 years since that. So it's actually a lot safer than people realize now. Um, so I, I think actually Narcos helped it. Yeah. 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 I, yeah, I, I, I great I show. That's the case. So, <laughs> yeah. so it's just like, like somebody will, will go to Columbia and for like a, uh, for like a luxury, uh, room on, on Airbnb have no issues paying like a hundred dollars a night, even though the real estate is like 10 times or more cheaper than it is in say like Los Angeles or something. So, so it was, it, it was just one of the countries that, that in my research, um, came up as a really good uh, business model. And so I, uh, I partnered with somebody that was already there that uh, was doing Airbnbs and, and uh, that's, that's how that all started. That's fascinating. And then what was, your, what was your first exposure to blockchain? And did, you, did it catch you when you were first exposed? Oh, you're talking about like way back in 2009? So yeah. So no, I no, I didn't know anything about uh, about blockchain technology, Bitcoin until until 2016. So my first exposure w- was actually on YouTube, coming across that that video, being like, uh, "Here's the video." Yeah. What? Oh, okay, got it. Wow. 
yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, it was, it was a YouTube video in 2016. And I was like, you know, what is this Bitcoin and why does he, why is he showing it? Like, how does he have a million dollars of it and that he's showing on screen? So it was it, like, uh, it was, it, it was crazy to me because this guy just seemed like a regular guy. And, and, uh, and he's like, yeah, I just made this in the last year uh, with, with, uh, with, with Bitcoin and, you know, it turned out to be the, the, the scammy project, but, but still it kind of, it, it kind of, perked my interest because I was like, you know, making a million dollars, that's a, that's a tough thing to do for most people. So, uh, so like this guy seemed to do it pretty easily. I wanted to know more about, uh, you know, how, how all that stuff worked. And then, uh, you know, after, after seeing, um, you know, what blockchain was, what cryptocurrency was, I, I, I was really hooked. So, so like I got burnt and kind of, I, I retracted too much into, into like my shell after that, because for the period like 2017 and on, I pretty much only invested in in, uh, in like Bitcoin and and Ethereum, like that. Like those are the ones that I invested in. I really didn't um, venture in too many more because I've been burned so many times, and also the the projects just seemed so unsustainable. So like I, I did that. Chain it, it's it's an discovered. interesting world when Bitcoin and Ethereum are viewed as conservative. Right. Yeah, I know. You know. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I, I know. It's just it's funny how things are evolving so quickly. Um, but uh, so okay, now now we can kind of bridge over into why. So you you had this experience. You were, you got exposed to Bitcoin and blockchain. You got your fingers burnt. You kind of pulled back, got conservative. But you know, you had you said something very valuable. I think, which is you, you realized the technology is not as fault. It was sort of your understanding of the technology and maybe the other people's use of the technology or misuse of the technology. But the core ideas themselves were valuable. So you, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, you know, it's like you know, you, you know, the relationship ended. Your heart was broken, but you built yourself into a better man as a result. <laughs> exactly right. You know, yeah. <laughs> I, I don't, I don't even want to admit how much that resonates with me right now, where I am in my life. But that's that's a whole different topic. Um, okay, so the, just so take us down, take us down the path to wise. You know, kind of give us a wise origin story. Like, how did you end up with this idea? And what other ideas did you work through and kind of reject along the way? Yeah, so so I've been in enough projects uh, by by 2019. I've been in enough projects that I was I was certain that no matter what I created, it would have to be 100% decentralized because I just seen too many projects that even have they have the best intentions. But if if somebody holds the keys to everything, I feel like it's just human nature that no matter how well intended you start something, if there is a chance for somebody to for somebody to take all the money and run or to or to use it in a bad way, it's most likely going to happen at some point it, uh, if that is that chance. So like I mm -hmm. took that and I was like, OK, whatever I create, I have to make sure that even I don't control anything that could mess up the project like it has to be a hundred percent decentralized and, and and then the other thing that I, I carried with me was how unsustainable it was to sell um, tokens for money but then not use that money to directly back the market cap um, so it's it's kind of a ridiculous model to me you, you know like like um, pretty much all uh, sorry let, let me interrupt I mean the, the normal thing I think one would assume is that you're selling these tokens and using the money to, to develop the software or in the platform, and it, right. why is that? Why is that counterintuitive, or why but, is that wrong? No, no, it's it's not it's not wrong. It's just it's it's just as risky as any company. So if sure. I, if you're if you're investing in an ICO, you are uh, dependent on them executing on their roadmap, innovating, working really hard to get it done. That's no different than any regular company, and that that's kind of undercuts the whole um, value of blockchain, which is 100% decentralized money systems that you can trust. So, um, so all right, I, I'm just gonna be me and you know, I like to dialogue, I like to jump in and interrupt and all that okay. stuff. I mean, it's not necessarily, you, you can make a very strong argument that the value proposition of blockchain is only delivered, or is very strongly delivered when it's tied to decentralized uh, when it's decentralized but I, I don't know if it necessarily requires money i mean it seems like there's a whole bunch of uses other than money is it is it oh right the core 
Right. But, but I think, it, yeah, so I'm not saying that there's no validity to any, any other model. I'm just saying like, as thinking to what, what is the model that I want to create? I want to create okay. money. And I think the only way to create money on, on blockchain is to do it in a decentralized way where the money that gets put into the system is used to back up the market cap immediately. So, so I am mm. trying, like, uh, like WISE is a currency and it's the base layer currency for an entire ecosystem. So I felt very strongly that in order to, for, uh, to, to create like a base layer currency on the ecosystem, what needs to happen is, is the money that gets sent in to buy WISE that has to be um, protected and used to back the market cap. Um, and that's the foundation that I wanted to build on rather than a foundation that's uh, speculative or depends on, you know, future developments and, and, and stuff like that. Like, mm -hmm. like Bitcoin um, uh, worked because it was, uh, it was, you know, fairly distributed and it was the first one. So you got a lot of people that know what it is and, 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 and a lot of people that buy into it. I think to make another money system that is that that's not going to work anymore. There's been plenty of people that, that have made stuff that is just as decentralized as Bitcoin and they don't get the buy-in. They don't create the value for it. I, I think in order to create another- but, but, uh, Isn't it time that we admit that Dogecoin is really the ultimate? <laughs> isn't that crazy? You know, you know, that's such a good, it's such a good case study on how um, community and branding is, is a huge part of what brings value. <laughs> so yeah that that's... you know what you know what i that is a beautiful observation and i haven't heard anyone make that specific observation in reference to dogecoin you're in a way validating the price having gone up or explaining it in non-crazy terms yeah yeah i mean you I, know I, I don't own that much dogecoin like i it's, it's always been a silly thing so i so so you know i I've, I've i've had i've had a tiny amount just just to say that i've that I've had it, um, mm -hmm. but uh, and 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 I do think a lot of people coming into Dogecoin, um, they're like Dogecoin is probably the first crypto that they got, and so once they discover you know Bitcoin and Ethereum and how this other stuff works, that we might see money flowing away from Dogecoin into into some of no, these other ones. No, no, <laughs> no, no okay, never, my no. Dogecoin stop that! Stop that! God, <laughs> oh, you're breaking my heart. Breaking my heart. Okay, but you're. I, I think I'm hearing you say that you know if you're if you're using if your if your goal is to create alternative money, or even new money, it's probably even a better way to say it. The um, and you're distributing it in exchange for payment, and not just airdropping it out there, or not depending on sort of the spontaneous generation of value through scarcity all of Bitcoin. That mm -hmm. the money that's being contributed should sort of be a soft reference or backup for the thing you're creating and, and you're, you're not paying anyone for one because that'd be a stable coin it's you like one thing we talked about before is, i mean you're, you're kind of you know by my by my lip but you're kind of embracing a libra-esque model of backing rather than correlation a, a reserve it sounds like yeah yeah, yeah. so or, like, or, or you can tear that apart if i'm wrong well the so the original idea was uh, was the gold backed dollar. You know, I, I remember how many times I've heard my dad and my relatives talk to me about how money used to be backed by assets. Like with pre nineteen seventies, used to be able to trade in your dollar yep. for for gold, and then after it came off the gold standard, it became less valuable because it's not really backed by anything and because of inflation. So I would I always had this idea of um, you know wait the the way to create uh, retain value is to have assets back in them. And that always made sense to me. And now that uh, cryptocurrency has evolved, we, we've got good ways to back it with assets. So, so like before Bitcoin and Ethereum really got that big, um, you would have to back it with other assets. Like there was, remember that there's like diamond backed cryptos or gold backed cryptos. Well, sure. That requires like a third party. You got to trust that they have those mm -hmm. assets and, and stuff like that. But um, but but ether as an asset is is uh, is is huge, and you know being able to back it by ether, we can do that all within the the, the blockchain system we have already. We sure. did it 
by just taking the ether that was sent into Bywise and locking it with, with the other half of supply on, on a Uniswap. So that, that, that's how we did our launch. Now we have a $250 million liquidity pool that's backing up the value of, uh, of all of our investors. Is, is, isn't that crazy? Okay, so what, what, what was the epiphany moment where you just started to, to start Wise? It was, uh, it was when some shenanigans got done in another project that, that I thought was pretty decent. And, uh, you know, you, you know, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna say name, name is my friend. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, I, I, no? Okay. I don't want to name that one because I don't want to give it any, any, uh, credibility, but it's basically re remember when I talked about how, like, even when things are done with good intentions, I, I can see you're a good intelligence officer. You didn't take the bait. <laughs> yeah. okay so I, yeah. I can't subvert you all right <laughs> yeah go ahead it's just like if if things can go wrong they probably will so if you sure. have one guy that is in that, that is in control of everything even if he starts out with good intentions like it's 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 a bad model because at at, at some point things are going to go wrong so it just it just made it clear to me that um that like somebody had to create one that was 100% decentralized and um, and didn't like take a big portion of the of the cuts um, mm -hmm. just for the creation of the crypto. Um, so so um, like we raised 100 million dollars worth of ETH and then uh, and then now that 100 million dollars of ETH is now locked on Uniswap with with the with the equal amount of of Ys. So I didn't see anybody else or, or uh, think that anybody else would be willing to do something like that, you know, raise a hundred million dollars and, and, and then not take it, but to, but to because, stick it Because of the sacrifice involved or because the, because the potential sacrifice involved? Like the people's, uh, people's desire to make money would not, that like the incentives aren't there if your main desire is to make money the direct way. Right. What I'm hearing. Yeah. 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 Exactly. And and it was it was a difficult thing to do, but I, but I'm glad like we coded it in prior so that mm. like it, even it, even I couldn't have changed my mind what, uh, what, when I saw the the raise amount. So like I like like at that point I, I never had a million dollars in in in, in my bank account, but to see a hundred million dollars get raised. And then just and then go straight to Uniswap. Like I, I don't. No, I, 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 I gotta ask you: Was it was there ever that moment where you're like? Ugh, Damn. <laughs> <laughs> well, 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 I'd um, I'd intended to raise that amount from the very start. Uh, like if you if you go back, you can see some of my streams saying like I'm trying to raise fifty thousand ether uh, for this. Uh, so 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 like yeah, no, but there's th mentioned. there's this and there's like oof. True. Oh, yeah, it was, oh, it, was oh. it was very <laughs> awesome to see. It, it, it was yeah. it was it was really awesome to 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 see how it all came together. And, and, and yeah, sure. There was that moment where it would have been like, man, <laughs> you know, this is long-term, but wow, that is, that is a lot of money that, that, uh, that was being raised. So it was, yeah. it was, it was pretty cool, but you know, it's, it's a, Fair it's enough. A, yeah. it, was, it was a great thing. Uh, and so, um, you know, in a, in our, in our expansion to, in our, uh, integration with, uh, with wise token on, on Binance smart chain coming this next week, like we're, we're doing the exact same thing. So I'm, I'm very excited about that. Uh, because you know the the fees on it, like I love Ethereum. Ethereum will always be my favorite blockchain, at least for the for for the next few years, um, because it's the most decentralized that I can find. But the fees are really high right now, and so when you're trying to like stake within the system or buy, if it's costing you know fifty dollars just to buy and one hundred fifty dollars yeah. just to stake, that's that's kind of ridiculous. So we so. Um, I'm I'm really happy that that we're doing this integration to Binance Smart Chain because you're going to be able to uh, do everything um, we, we do with Wise, except it's not going it, to it's not going to cost much, like 14 cents per transaction. Oh, that's great! That's fantastic. Now, one thing we talked about before is, and you you kind of alluded it to you alluded to it now with your with the feature of your inability to take the money and do what you want with it. Your code is locked. Yes. Yep. Yep. There's no. Can, can you talk about that a bit? What's that? Can you talk about that and how that was intentional and a feature of the system? Sure. Yeah. And, and also, to, just to remind you of what we talked about before, how do you mitigate the risk of like, oh gosh, I wish we we would do this later? Like, how do how do you oh, make the sure, lock? Yeah. How do you, you you know what to talk about? So go. Yeah. 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 So 
one of the things I learned along the way was that not many DeFi um, projects are actually decentralized fully. Um, there's usually admin keys, a way to update the code. So in many projects, you think your money's safe, you think the parameters can't change, but they actually can. Um, and that is a problem for me. One of, the, one of my favorite protocols in the entire space is Uniswap. And you know all the, all the clones on Uniswap, same code. Uniswap parameters cannot be changed. There's no admin keys. They can't decide that the fees on Uniswap, instead of being 0.3%, well, now they're gonna be 1% or they can't decide to change it in a way where they can like just take the money. It's 100% decentralized. And that's really important, especially when we're talking about money and, and large amounts of it. Um, so WISE is completely decentralized. The token is completely decentralized. And, and here's why that's okay. Because it's the money system itself is simple enough that it never needs to be updated. The way to update it would be to build on top of it. So like just Bitcoin, um, of course, has the core team that, that sometimes make up, makes updates to it. But at its very core, like it, it doesn't really need to be changed. It, it's fairly simple. It does what it uh, is designed to do, and it will mm. always do that. And so, I, so Bitcoin is like a closed... Um, a closed system that doesn't have any leaks. It's not going to be, you know, spurting out value anywhere. You're, it's not going to just print an extra million Bitcoin, um, you know, someday by accident. And, and what's and that so mean? That's, Money yeah, printer go brr or something? Right. Exactly. Right. It's, it's, <laughs> it's not going to do anything that's going to compromise the integrity of that system. And why is it the same way? So it's it's a closed system. It can't be changed. It's going to work the way it's intended to work. However, because it's built on Ethereum and you know what the, the other ones we're integrating with Binance Smart Chain, Casper, et cetera, what, um, it's, it's, it's uh, is able to be built on top of. So the first thing I'm doing at, uh, now that the token is done is that I'm building uh, other parts of the ecosystem, uh, namely lending and borrowing. So uh, what, why is this meant to be not just a token, but uh, a banking solution, a, de a fully decentralized banking solution. And so we can't do that without lending and borrowing. And so we are sure. in the middle right now of, of finishing our lending contract, which allows uh, users to borrow. It allows users to lend. We also have leverage lending, which is like, imagine you got 10 ETH, but uh, you can actually lend 30 ETH to the contract and be earning interest over that position as well. So it allows you to leverage your lending position and, and earn interest on that, uh, which, which is something new that, that we innovated specifically. And also there's been a lot of hacks um, and exploits from uh, like price oracles and, and some you know, loopholes in other protocols that allow vaults to be drained. And so mm -hmm. because ours are integrated uh, specifically with the DEX, we don't, you, we don't have dependencies on other protocols and uh, we, we don't have th that vulnerability to like flash loan attacks and stuff like that. So we're talking about an ultra secure um, system that allows you to lend and borrow with leverage as well um, that has this token attached to it that is uh, e extremely valuable because it is backed by a pool of ether or whatever intrinsically valuable asset. So like backed by BNB on Binance Smart Chain, backed by Casper on Casper. And the cool thing about that is that the profits from the lending system, you know, um, the mm -hmm. APY from lending, borrowing, and uh, liquidations as well, the profits actually don't go to, uh, to like the Ysoft LLC company. They get pumped back into the reserve pool. Um, and so every lending and borrowing contract needs a reserve pool. We're holding ours in WISE token, and the people who lend their WISE to the reserve pool basically earn a slice of the system wide profits. Um, oh, wow. So that's, okay. th that's, that, that's the idea with wise, like we wanted to create, like there, there's two ways to win, I think, uh, with, with, with decentralized finance. First is being completely fair, which, which well, we got to cover, like no team tokens went to me, fully asset backed, didn't use the money for myself, it's all back in the project. So we got fair down. Um, the, the other aspect about it is 
is that the users get to share in the profits and, and all of them. So there's other protocols that have systems that do lending and borrowing. Sure, you got Aave, Compound, MakerDAO, uh, et cetera. Of course, they, they it's I'm not- I'm sorry, let, let me ask you a cynical question. What's in it for you? Well, I'm a big investor in WISE. So got I it. invested, so it was very important for me not to make money off the creation of the protocol, but to make money on the protocol itself, just like any other investor. Um, so I became a really big investor in WISE because, you know, I, I sent a lot of Ethereum to the contract along, along with any other investors. And um, I can use that WISE to mm. stake, which I do have a lot staked. I can use it to provide liquidity on partner exchanges uh, for awards. And I can use it to add to the reserve pool to get a percentage of those, uh, uh, of those system-wide profits. Okay. Um, so, so it was, it, there, there's just too many, um, founders out there that make golden parachutes for themselves on the creation. And I think that just, it, it's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. It's just, it hurts the sustainability if you take that money up front. Well, so it's a little, there's a little something wrong with it. I mean, you're, I think you're seeing it at least in other protocols that maybe not the founders, but like the initial developers, when, when they make bank yeah, right off the start, their incentives change. Exactly. Yeah. Heaven like, forbid they want to spend more time with their kids. I mean, that's that's just terrible. But you know, but you know, but seriously though, I mean, you know, you're. You, I think you saw this. I think you saw this a little bit with Ethereum. You know, obviously still being developed. Obviously still got life in it. But a lot of the initial developers did great, and now they're done. Yeah. Yeah. That's my impression. Uh, many different examples. Sushi Swap, like that original debacle with Sushi Swap, where they just like uh, the. The founder got 10%. I knew that as soon as I read that article, I was like 10% of all sushi tokens go to the founder. Um, that's a lot. <laughs> and so, yeah. and so I wasn't surprised at all when I saw boom, you know, $12 million sold on the market um, in the, in, uh, in the beginning there. So that, that like, that's just, um, it, it's not, it's not aligned. It, it's not good for longevity for the longevity of the project. And the thing is I want other developers to, to, um, to build in my ecosystem. Mm -hmm. And since I'm not like, I don't have profits from the ecosystem coming to me and I don't have a lion's share of the tokens. I just have, like, I have what I bought with my own money. Um, it's a equal, it's, it's a level playing field. So developers develop like bringing their products to wise, they're, they're not at a disadvantage. Right. And so that's really important. We've already had, uh, you know, developers develop, uh, you know, info products and, uh, you know, exchange front ends and all sorts of cool stuff in the wise ecosystem. And that's what I want to build. And I kind of took a page out of the book of from uh, Ethereum from that, because, you know, Ethereum is an open source thing where anybody could upload a smart contract. You, you don't got to pay Vitalik um, for uploading your smart contract. And, uh, you, you know, you're just talking about maybe the token itself. Yeah, they did get lots of rewards up front. Sure, I, I, I think it worked out. But as far as the technology, being able to upload smart contracts doesn't cost anything. So I wanted that model um, because, um, you know, there's so many other projects where if I'm a developer and I want to develop in that ecosystem, I'm immediately at a disadvantage, even just as a, uh, as a whole, because, um, you know, there's so much control over the ecosystem by the creators. Makes sense. Now, uh, so you... How did you, who's your team? How did you form them? How did you get people to invest in this if it happened? Like, what, how did you bring this out from your mind into the world? Sure, yeah. So I, uh, I got lucky because one of, my, um, what, uh, one of my friends happened to be a really good developer. He, he was at the time uh, working at Numerator, a big company based out of Chicago. And, and he was a lead dev there. I actually convinced him to leave Numerator and come and work for me. <laughs> nice. so, so, so that was, uh, that was like the, the spark. And so since then, uh, we've gained an, another really good Solidity developer and then two mathematicians that were just people that liked my ideas and liked that, uh, what, uh, what I was doing. So I uh, uh, found them online, turned out to be very skilled. And, um, you know, after contributing, um, like, like I, I had this group of 12 people that mm -hmm. when I was making the white paper for Wise Token, I was like bouncing ideas off and being like, hey, here's, here's how I want to do this. What do you guys think of this? 
And so there was some very clear, um, uh, really knowledgeable people that that, that kind of show themselves from from that group. And that's where my team got formed. So I got a developer and one of my mathematicians from that original group. Now we have uh, uh, now we have a second developer, a community manager, a second mathematician, um, and and uh, a, a few other people. But it, it was really just um, trial and error, uh, doing a lot of work, uh, vetting people too. Like it took a long time for us to find an expert, expert Solidity developer. And that, that's really important when, uh, uh, when you're coding. And- uh, did, your mil did your military intelligence help with the vetting at all? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, I, I, don't, I don't think a lot of hiring processes are, are very good actually, but, but like we, like uh, me and, and Aaron, uh, well, I, I, I'd Aaron like develop uh, tests. And so it wouldn't, it wouldn't just be an interview. There'd be like tests uh, and, and like if they, if uh, you know, however well they did on the test would kind of determine what level mm -hmm. we think they're at. So, so it was good to have somebody I know is a really good lead developer in the first place to be able to make these tests that mm -hmm. where there's like you know 30 problems in them, varying from really easy to spot to an uh, only an expert would catch this issue, and mm -hmm. to run them through it and to see there's some people who just have no clue whatsoever. There's some people that maybe get five errors and there's some people that just smash it. And uh, those are the people we go for. And um, so, so we actually was had- it, a, Was it ever the case that the ones who bragged the least were the best? Or is that just a, my kind of preconception? Were, were the uh, big talkers the, yeah, so, the worst or the best or was there yeah, no correlation? So, but, Vitaly, yeah he, yeah, he doesn't brag at all. He's, he's, he's a very humble, very quiet guy. Um, so it kind of uh yeah so yeah so i think the best developers are just kind of quietly just doing what they love and mm -hmm. and and aren't yeah they're not they're not like you know the the people talking with, with with big egos at all no this is like like i i found this guy he's been a, a absolute hero mm -hmm. um and not only helping us with coding but with the testing of the code too, because like it's it's hard to find people who can not just code but know how to systematically audit the code as, as well. Um, because I, one thing I've come to learn as a as a uh, developer of, of projects is that you can't trust audits at all. Like I I, I don't care if it's yeah. Trail of Bits, Certix, like 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 uh, consensus diligence. I don't trust. Um, other people that have not been looking at the code for a year to understand deeply what the code is and be able to think of all the different problems. There's some that are better than others, but I think the best um, the, the best fallback is actually internal testing from your own highly skilled developers. And we found that by trial and error because you know we we got we got several audits and still we're, we're you know found issues after that. Through through our own internal testing, so and, and was, your stakes are so high because if you're locking the code exactly. and making it immutable forever, mm -hmm. I mean th this is like you know you know letting an it, this is like releasing an artificial intelligence to rule you and never uh, being able to turn it off. I mean this well, is like a, you know this okay, is like a, I, this I is science fiction I, territory. I, I think that's a little dramatic because this is just like, it, it's, it's more like building a foundation that you want to make sure has more, no cracks in it. Like you're still building a lot of cool stuff on Fine. top of it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> I, th I thought I was being so evocative and clever. You just, so, you just totally busted me. That's fine though. It's, 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 it's okay. Don't worry. You'll, you'll be back on the show. No, <laughs> I'm just playing around. No, no, I, I, no, I, I get it though. But you know, yes, I, I get it. We're, we're, I'm, on my own world, I'm dealing with this sort of audit issue also, and we're, we're having debates on the projects I'm involved in. You know, do you do an audit? Do you do a code review? Like, you know, what's expensive? And it's so expensive now because the demand for it is so huge. And we, we also I think did the quality of the audits out there are maybe dropping a little bit just because people are trying to, you know, hustle. Oh, sure. Yeah, yeah. I, I think so as well. Because yeah, all auditing companies, they're a business. So they want to push through as, as many as they can as well. It's, they're not really aligned, like they're somewhat aligned because their reputation is, is on the line, but, the, but really what they care more about making sure your code is okay is, is, uh, is you know, running their business and, and, and making more money. Like it, sure. it, it is a business after all. 
One thing we did in addition to all that is run a bug bounty. So we had a 100 ether yeah. reward bug bounty uh, because sometimes community members who understand the project and you know get that second pair of eyes to look at it are, are, are really good as well. Um, so we had you know 30 different people from the community um, go for our, our bug bounty and, and try to find stuff. Found a couple super minor errors, uh, but it like it really just get, gave us that extra level of comfort knowing that not only did we get the formal audit, but we also conducted our own vigorous test and we had a bug bounty with a pretty massive reward um, that a bunch of people participated in. So I'm, I'm very comfortable with, with our code. And at the end of the day, it's it's simple. It doesn't have outside dependencies. Um, like it's it's just a simple contract that that works in a way that's going to lock the value of the of the money that goes into it to make mm -hmm. sure that it's a that it's a long lasting uh, ecosystem. Interesting. And then the, maybe you touched on this before, but do you, do you have a political philosophy behind this at all, or uh, sure, kind you know, of. In, in a broad yeah. sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So in a broad sense, what I am um, building this in response to is um, the fact that we don't really control the value of uh, uh, of our money. It's really like the the central reserve, and it's and it's other factors like economy and 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 war and stuff like that. And so I I don't like having third parties control like my net worth. I I, I want to be in control with no middlemen of, of you know, my money, growing it, being a provider for my family, et, uh, et cetera. So the only way to do that is, is through um, this decentralization. Like we, we, we don't know how the world is going yeah. to evolve. Like, like who, who knew how this, you know, uh, you know, COVID coronavirus thing would, would really change the world. And so we don't know what's coming down the road next 10, 20, 30 years um, that, no. that, that is going to affect things like our money system. I want to be in, in, in total control of, uh, of you know, my, my financial sovereignty. And I think that's really important for other people as well. And also it's such a big opportunity. Like I, I can't tell you how many people um, who, you know, it was kind of a blessing being stuck inside all the time to uh, for some people to learn about this stuff, because um, you know we've got uh, so much money for free ju just for using decentralized finance, like Uniswap. You got 400 tokens per MetaMask address that that you use to to swap on Uniswap. That's like twelve thousand dollars more than that now. Um, like that's tens of thousands of dollars. And then you had the same thing with One Inch. Just yesterday, you had uh, Ampleforth release their governance token. I'd use ample forth. I think I uh, like, I probably cash mine out early, but I, I like, I'm not going to be looking at the chart. So I don't really care. I think I got like $5,600 for free from the, uh, from the fourth token, just because I had used ample forth. So you got these things like for some people that will take them out of poverty and, and to, um, and so if to, you have Bitcoin, what would you do with it right now? Probably trade it for Ethereum. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I mean, I, I do, I do, I, I, I do have some Bitcoin just, just because I, I don't, I don't want to be left out. Uh, but uh, it, it, you know, because you know, who, who, who knows? You know, if we go to 200, 200 k per Bitcoin this cycle, like I, I, I d definitely don't want to be left out of that. But it's, it's not my biggest yeah. holding. Um, and uh, I uh, am a big believer in Ethereum. Obviously, wise because I built it and because it's backed by Ether. Um, I, uh, you know, I also recently invested in BNB just because you know we're expanding to the BSC ecosystem. Um, I, it actually went crazy. Like, uh, like I was starting I to invest yeah. when it was like forty dollars, and only in a few in, in just a few months, it, it now went over what like six hundred dollars. That that's been crazy. yeah, life, life's terrible, right? I, I, st I still trust Ether more. Like I, I, I trust Ether well, sure. a, a, a lot more uh, long term. But right now the gas fees are so high. Um, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure what's going to happen. I do think that EIP fifteen fifty nine coming here in July is is going to be huge. And I, I, I really think that the um, it, even the short term roadmap for for Ethereum is 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 going to be huge. It, it, it is my largest holding. 
Mm -hmm. um, but I, but that doesn't stop me from, from looking at other projects as well. E even layer two is like Polygon. Uh, Polygon's pretty interesting. Um, like, like Polygon, the, the Matic network, quick swap. So dear audience, none of this is official investment advice and you need to do your own research, but this is absolutely, yeah, that's fascinating, right? That, that's what I say every video. So, so you're absolutely right. Not financial advice is just for entertainment purposes and my opinion, <laughs> not financial advice. So, so what do you, if everything works the way it's supposed to work and it's 2025, mm -hmm. what's happening on WISE? Uh, 2025, I, I would like to see um, at least $10 billion of total value locked in the, in the lending protocol. And, and, the, and the thing with WISE is that as soon as we get this lending protocol out, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's got the industry standard, but also these additional innovations. There will be a demand for it because um, it, it works off supply and demand. So if people aren't borrowing, then lending is going to be re a really good deal. And then if people aren't lending, sure. then borrowing is going to be a really good deal. So, I mean, if you look at the trajectory of like Compound, Aave, MakerDAO, it's just consistently up because there is a demand for this. There's, there's not enough. Like there's, we have not reached the point yet where, oh, uh, now I got to choose between the lending protocols because... Uh, because there's just uh, too much money in the system now. I, I don't. I don't think we're reaching that anytime too soon. Probably not before 2025. So lending protocols like Wise, I, I expect it to consistently go up. And because all our profits go back to the reserve pool, that mm. increases the demand for Wise. Because people that because if you lend Wise to the re reserve pool, you'll be getting a piece of those profits, which would be going up as the total value lot go up. So what I see is a just consistent upward trajectory um, of, of a time value locked, which also means a demand for wise. And, you know, as we, you know, uh, do these other partnerships and ecosystem expansion, I, I just see consistently over time um, just growth. Like that's, that's, uh, th that's what I see for the future wise. Like it's, it's, um, it's kind of cool because there's a limited amount of downside, but an unlimited amount of upside. So, it's, so right now, you know, Wise is relatively new. Um, it's it's kind of hard to convince people now that like you know, holding Wise is better than is Ether Wise backed by Ether. Um, what's that? Holding Wise is Wise. Yeah, exactly. That that holding Wise is Wise. But you know, as uh, as we grow, as as our total value locked grows. Um, th then we gain more and more trust and people start to see, oh, this is, you know, it, uh, Ethereum is programmable money and WISE is programmed money, you know, with it, with these, with these extra features that do all these cool things. So Good once- Good soundbite, my friend. Yeah. Programmed <laughs> money. Ah, I like that. I like it. So let me, I mean, obviously we're going to put this in the show. We're, we're going to wrap this up, but it, but it's been fantastic. And we're, of course, we're going to put this in the show notes. But how do people learn more about the project? How do they reach you? What do you what are you looking for? And just how does how can that kind of nexus form? If there's people who have something to contribute or they have an interest? Sure, absolutely. So so we have our website, which is wisetoken.net. Uh, we uh, uh, just in a few days here, we are uh, integrating on BSC. We're having a massive yes. liquidity formation event. So that's wisetoken.net forward slash BSC. And we are also very active on Telegram, which is just wise token on Telegram, uh, Twitter uh, at wise underscore token. And, and those are the best places to find out what we're doing. Also YouTube, I, I will be live streaming every single day, wise staking on, on, uh, on uh, YouTube. People love the YouTube, especially the live, uh, the, uh, the, the live event during our presale. Um, during our 50-day auction events uh, on Ethereum, I streamed every single day for 50 days in, in a oh, row. Wow. So uh, I, I'm going to do the same thing for our 15-day launch event on uh, on Binance Smart Chain. So uh, people can That's why you have this awesome setup. I, I like it. I like the microphone. I like the background. You know, looking, looking, you're looking sharp and high res. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah it's very it, cool. it took a while. I, I've been YouTubing since 2016. So, um, so I've been... it's like you were, you, it's like you were crypto born in 2016. It feels like, you know, it, no, I, I transitioned from gaming. Actually, I, I, I was, I was a gamer. 
Uh, before that, I was playing mobile games. Um, oh my god, I hate you! Yeah. You're, 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 you've had such a good life. You're doing so well. <laughs> you're, you're, I mean, you're in Dubai right now. Who look who's talking? <laughs> I, don't, I don't really hate. I'm having you on the show. I'm, I'm, I'm being ironic. No, no, you're, 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 you're like, what, you're like turning into a hero of mine. Yeah, I was doing gaming, and then I started a new protocol because you know, you know, I, I saw this things. So I just wanted to fix it. <laughs> it's like <laughs> my kind of guy. My kind of guy. That's why you're on here because. You you know what? Future talk is about making the future better. Okay, it, it's like you know, I'll, I'll, maybe you and I discussed this before, but you know, I've been around the block chronologically, and you know, it's it's 2021. We should be on Mars. We should have like you know, real robots. We should have our replicants. We should have cured cancer. Like we should have had solved a lot of these problems. We shouldn't have this global warming climate change BS going on. Like there's things that need to get solved and things that need to get handled. And the reason I went back into law and, and practice in this area was I saw the promise of crypto and blockchain. And it's, it's great to see people like you approaching this field, learning lessons. You know, you came in there late, not really, but, you know, compared to some people, you learned fantastically quickly. You went through a couple negative experiences that you didn't like go die from, but you integrate that into like a motivation set. And you're out here just blasting forward with a platform that, you know, you have your whole fair raise thing, the way you, you know, the way you engage your community, it's just very even, it's very ethical, it's very smooth, and it's it's awesome. And I think people should pay attention to it and get involved. Well, thank you so much. It's really been an honor to be here. Uh, we, we haven't, we haven't talked at length like this. So it was awesome to, to, uh, you know, engage you at length and to, and to learn about that. I did not know um, that, that you had those views and you know it's it's interesting because you know we had this uh industrial revolution and now people take everything for granted like like nobody's trying to bring us to the next level anymore because we all are are are, are living in a place where most of us you know get, get stuff easy uh, like it was much harder a uh, hundred years ago to, to live. And yes. so I think that's why some of the technology has, has kind of like um, leveled out because people just are accepting the status quo and not trying to push us further. But uh, yeah, I, yeah. you know, it's like Facebook upgrading that. its UI doesn't do it for me. Right. <laughs> okay. I want, I want to, I want to, I want my jet pack. You know what I mean? It's like, come on. They kind of already. have those. Have you seen the jet ones? Like, yes, I know, but you know, I want my jetpack. Oh, I got gotcha. you. <laughs> okay, and, and for 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 me to feel comfortable in a jetpack, believe me, the technology needs to improve and be a little bit more idiot proof. So, but I'm sure we can get there. So, you know, it's like it's, it's coming. But you know, it's it's kind of metaphor. It's like, come on, where, 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 where's my underwater house? You know, where's my sea <laughs> setting? You know, I, I want to go vacation on an asteroid. Come on, let's go. Chop, chop. Anyways, Peter, it, it's been awesome. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. And we will publish this immediately. And thanks to AIBC for making it all happen. And of course, our producers slash videographers behind the scenes. Folks, really appreciate it. 